Hello. Um, I'm going to make another video of myself attempting to solve a problem, but it's a little bit different from um, some of the other videos I've done of that nature, because this one is a problem that um, I've tried before and failed to solve, although um, I was about half the age I am now when I tried it, um, which doesn't mean that I think I'm in a better position to solve it now, because uh, unfortunately I'm at an age where being twice the age I was then is not necessarily a huge advantage. Um, so I'm setting out on this without really with sort of feeling that, 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 that it's more likely than not that I'll fail to solve it. But it's a lovely problem um, for reasons that uh, um, I won't go into now, not because I, I don't want to, but just because I, got, I want to talk about the problem itself. It's recently come to my attention again, and I had the urge to give it another try. And then having had that urge, I thought, well, maybe I should just video myself while I'm doing it so as not to waste the opportunity if it turns out that I happen to solve it. So the problem is, uh, I'm, I will now share my screen. I've draw, It's a geometry problem. So I've drawn um, a diagram in advance. I couldn't resist thinking about it a tiny bit, but I've got basically nowhere with it again. Um, it's quite a well-known problem, I think. Uh, so let me find the relevant um, thing to, to share. Um, so here we go. We've got a triangle and it's got these angles. So that's 20 there, 20 there, 60 there, 50, 30. And we have to work out the angle X. Uh, actually, I think in the version that I saw, uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of, I think you may find that you, uh, I mean, I would very, very much recommend trying to solve this problem before watching the video, if you intend to watch the video at all. Um, so to give you the chance to do that, um, I will, I'm now sort of talking slowly so that you can, if you want to press pause and, uh, have a go at the problem. Um, and then the next thing you might want to do is put yourself in the position that I'm in because the version of the problem that I saw recently actually tells you what x is and asks you to prove that x takes that value. So um, spoiler alert, if you want to, to, to try the problem without knowing what x is, you'd better press pause pretty soon. Um, so that was just uh, to give people a chance in case they weren't right next to their computer or something. Um, so now here comes what the value of x actually is uh, for those who want to do that version of the problem or what that, which I'm forced to do because I know what the value of x is. So I can't sort of pretend I don't. So it turns out that the problem is to show that x is in fact 30 degrees. I should add that this diagram that I've drawn here is very much not accurate. For example, this 20 degree angle is, appears much bigger than this 20 degree angle and things like that. Um, but that's sort of roughly what it looks like. So if you want to draw a more accurate diagram, you want to make it a bit uh, sharper at the top. Um, so one's first reaction to a problem like this is, well, come on, we've just got some angles. Can't we just sort of chase them around and uh, get the answer? So let's have a see what happens if you do that. And we see straight away that we can actually fill in some angles. So that adds up to 80. That's 50. So we've got to up to 130. Um, and so we um the angles of the entire tri triangle add up to 180 so that's also 50 which again shows just how inaccurate the diagram is because that's an isosceles triangle that side length should equal that side length i don't know whether that's going to be worth redrawing the diagram to make them look more similar um so if that's 50, we could actually fill in the angles around here as well. So 20, 50, that's 70. So we've got 110 there, which means this must be 70, and this must be 110, and this must be 70. I might as well put them all in. Uh, so what else can we do what about that one? Uh, well, if we got that one, we'd have X, but we don't seem to be able to get that one totally easily. Uh, we have a Ooh, about this one here that would be quite nice well we can get that actually let's just put that one in so 110 140 so we get another 40 to get us up to 180 uh, so if we could get either of those two angles we'd also be in fantastic shape because um 
then we'd have that angle and that would give us x or we'd, if we've got that angle obviously then uh, we, we get x because it'll add up to 180. So any of one, two, three, four, any of those four angles will be enough to give us all the other four. Uh, maybe we could see, given that this is supposed to be 30, what is this one supposed to be? It's supposed to be 80. Uh, so if that one's meant to be 80, then that one is 50, 80, 130. So that one's meant to be another 50. Interesting. And 20 and 50 is 70, so that's another 110 there. So that's supposed to equal that. So I think it's actually... Uh, I wonder if I can find a different color and mark in angles that I want rather than uh, let's let's do that. I'm going to put in in red if it's yes it's worked thirty eighty. So these are things I don't know. Would be absolutely delighted if I could prove. The reason I'm doing that is that. Um, It just might give me some kind of statement. I might be able to notice some triangles that if they were only similar, then I'd be in great shape. Um, just check that I've got the right thing again, yes. So have we got a 20, 50, 110 one somewhere? 20, 50, 110, yes. We'd like to be able to show that this triangle here is similar to this triangle here. So that's actually quite a, a nice um, potential thing to aim for. Um, 70, 80, 30, is there another conjecture in 70, 80, 30? There doesn't seem to be. Can't find even another angle of 80. So that triangle doesn't seem to be particularly relevant. Um, there's a 50, 60, 70. Okay, so I think the only the only thing that that's given me is that um, the problem is equivalent to showing that that triangle is similar to that triangle, but in a sort of similar but involving a reflection. So we have to sort of I suppose we don't get that this actually that they're actually congruent. I don't see any particular reason to suppose that. Um, another thing that I think is worth just briefly thinking about is whether. We're convinced that um, that this angle really is uniquely defined by the data. So let me just let's just quickly see why that has to be the case. Because um, we've got this particular triangle. So this angle of fifty. Uh, is going to be determining everything sort of, I mean, I'm going to make statements that are, so to speak, invariant up to an enlargement of the triangle and rotation and so on. But what will be determined by this angle here, what will be determined is the proportion <coughs> of this length to this length. Um, so that's absolutely given. And the proportion of, similarly by this 60 and whatnot, the, the, the proportion of this length to this length is completely fixed uh and so once so we know where this appears so to speak up that side and where this appears up that side and so that slope is also determined and uh, so that means that, um, that the angle is determined all these things angles must be uniquely determined by the data I should add one other thing that I, I forgot to mention that I happen to know about this problem, which is one, um, well, I remember one of my colleagues, the one person who actually told me about the problem um, back in, I suppose, the early 90s, um, telling me that he had managed to get it using techniques that were not pure sort of Euclidean geometry techniques. Um, and from what I understand, it is possible to do it using pure Euclidean geometry, but just a sort of straightforward angle chase, as I've done here, 
um, is not enough. And we've seen that with our own eyes, so that's, that's not enough. So the question is, what can we do if we want to use elementary methods, um, but we've been let down by just chasing the angles round and round? What else is there? And the, well, I don't know, I'm not a, a, a great sort of um, connoisseur, if that's the right word, um, of elementary geometry problems. So I may not give a very complete answer of the sort that a, a maths Olympiad um, champion would be proud of, so to speak. But um, one method that one can add just to chasing angles around is constructing extra things. And uh, so what can we do? You know, things like you can just dropping a perpendicular somewhere or extending a line and so on. Uh, so I'm going to have a, a think about this second option. So I want to, unfortunately, I've drawn this diagram in such a way that it doesn't make it easy, but I want to So I'll, I'll have another diagram, but I will not. I'll make it smaller. And I won't make nearly so much effort to make the lines straight. But to compensate for that, perhaps I will um, try to make the angle, make it look more isosceles. Uh, not quite where I wanted. So that's the 50. 50. And then 60. Uh, that was 20. 30. Um, Now, I've just noticed something up here, which actually adds to the point of doing what I'm about to try to do, which is that this triangle with a 30 and a 130 and a 20, um, potentially it matches this one with a sort of conjectured 30, conjectured 130 and a 20. So another thing would be nice, it'd be nice to, to prove that that triangle is similar to that triangle. What were the ones we had before? They were this triangle and this triangle. So I'm just wondering whether that's added anything to have that this triangle might be similar to this triangle. <clears throat> Not sure. So what I thought I might add, because this sort of rather tempting little slope here, is I might just extend that base and then just do something like this. I've no idea whether this is going to get me anything. But can I, having done that, um, make any deductions? Um, and it seems as though I can't because I don't know that angle there. It's the very angle that I want to calculate. And I do know that that one was... Uh, 40, that's 110, 70 and so on. So what have I gained by extending that? Uh, I also don't know what that angle is because if I knew what that angle was, I would have that angle. So I can, whatever, <laughs> it seems that I'm slightly doomed. But can I work out any of these angles? Can I get any sort of um, any hope of a similar triangle somewhere? I'm not sure. So what about using the fact that this triangle is isosceles? Is there some way of doing that? Um, I still feel it would be nice if I could yeah, that this length was equal to that length, which it sort of looks as though it might be now, but, um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, now, is there any reason to suppose that that might be the case? If it were the case, I'm going to sort of go in the other direction. If this length were equal to that length, would it? Uh, actually help in any way. 
Um, that would tell us that this triangle was actually congruent to this triangle, which would then tell us that the line from the here to here was parallel to this line because they'd be congruent and they'd both have this 20, 50, 20, 50, this length would be equal to this length. So this point would basically stick out the same amount from this line as this point. And I think it's not going to be the case that, well, we know that this line is not parallel to this line. So it's definitely not the case for what it's worth that this length is equal to this length. So what hope could there possibly be to show that this triangle is similar to this triangle? In fact, we can say a little bit more. This triangle is actually bigger than this triangle. So this diagram here is also somewhat misleading. Um, because, well, actually, maybe not. But also, well, no, because this length needs to be bigger than this length. And it doesn't look like it. Um, so I'm just going to put a sort of, because this, uh, this diagram is nicer to look at than the other one. I'll put those there and just comment. It didn't help very much. I couldn't fill in any angles or anything. I don't rule out that there is some clever way of making it help, but uh, I haven't seen it. Um, another thought is that circle theorems are often nice in these situations, that uh, if one can show that You've got some circle around. So, in fact, we can see how that's potentially, again, if we're in a sort of conjecturing mode. Um, no, I think I was about to say something nonsensical there. Trying to see if we can find two angles that um, would sort of like to be the same. going back to this triangle being similar to this triangle conjecturally again because I don't see any reason for that to be the case. There is a sort of small temptation to hack it out in some horrible way. But, uh, and then see if one can just sort of get some insight having done that and then find a nicer proof. But um, I'd rather not do that. But I'm now feeling fairly stuck. So what I mean by that is I'm feeling as though I don't have a good idea of even a plan to uh, solve the problem. So if I've got two triangles and I just sort of want them to be similar, that's not quite the same as exploiting similar triangles. And uh, are there any other, maybe I should ask whether there are any other construction lines I could consider adding and what might conceivably help. So dropping a perpendicular is very unlikely to be useful. I don't know why I say that. But 
I go quiet for too long and I'm, I will probably need to uh, simply stop the video and say I have no idea how to proceed, but that seems a little bit uh, too defeatist. So what else can we say? We do have a nice oscillator triangle here. We've got a 20 degree angle here and a 20 degree angle here. So that length is equal to that length. Does that really help? If that length equals that length, why would that be a useful piece of information? So the fact that this is 60 degrees is somehow suggestive. Um, and we've got sort of 30 and so on. So are there any equilateral triangles waiting to be drawn? Um, I can't really see where I would place another sort of pair of 60 degree angles that would do something non-horrible. I suppose if I put a 60 degree angle there, then I would have 30 plus 60 making 90. Uh, so I'd have a right angle and I'd have an equilateral triangle all at once. Um, and then I'd have another 20 degree angle. That's sort of, well, when I say I would have, what I mean is I would hope to have. Because again, I still don't know that that's 30. Uh, that feels a bit sneaky, but maybe I should. Or if I buy the same token. Something's odd here. I oh, know that's an 80, but yes, okay, so let's just try adding it over to this diagram because so that's 60, and that was conjectured to be 30, 40, so this is conjectured to be 20, so I'd better put that in red, because I don't want to take anything for granted. Um, why would I say conjectured to be 20 when I have 60 and 60 and 40, that, sorry, that is 20. The conjecture is that I have all this adding up to a right angle. If it adds up to a right angle, then this is the 30 that I want. So is there any particular reason to think that this triangle here should be a right angle triangle? Um, what else can I put in? So, 80 plus 60 is 140, so that, I think it's gone wrong. Uh, so this angle here is 130. Quick check. That doesn't make any sense. Um, it's 100, oh, 130, I don't know. 50 plus, oh, I see, because I just, yeah, 50 plus 30, so that, that angle there is 80. And so it's 100, sounds more like it. Um, what do I want this angle to be? I want it to be uh, 90. I want this angle to be 30, but so that definitely is a conjecture. So put it in red. So um, so 
So we would like ideally this thing to be another 100. So again, that's in red. Doing a bit of an angle chase, but with conjectured angles as well as actual angles. Um, so 30, 30. So this triangle would actually be isosceles, very much not as it looks. Uh, so, hmm. so going back to here, we were asking why would this length be the same as the length that, uh, of, the, of the side that you get here when you when you extend that and form a triangle? Um, I may have said something wrong there. I have said something wrong. 30 plus 30. Why did I say this was supposed to be 100? It should be 120. But then 60 plus 80 does not. I must have made some ridiculous mistake somewhere. But what is it? Okay, so the reason I said this should be... 30 was that I was conjecturing that this is 60. This whole sum here is 90. 60 plus 90 plus 30 makes 180. If that's 30, ah, sorry. Oh, yes, no, I haven't made a mistake. So 100 plus that 20 makes 120 plus the two 30s makes 180. Sorry, that is okay. And everything is consistent. I just haven't got a proof that it, it actually works. Um, just while I'm at it, I may as well add in to this diagram a couple of extra. It's 20 there. Um, So at least we've got something, we've got various different statements that would be, that aren't just about angles. So we've got something here that's sort of saying this length should equal this length. Um, that feels like the first and there was I think another isosceles triangle that sort of we would like to have. I can't remember now whether it's Any conceivable reason that that triangle should be isosceles? The funny thing is that when you draw the diagram that so that it doesn't look at all isosceles on the diagram, it seems to be very hard then to um, think of potential reasons for it to be isosceles because those reasons don't sort of show up visually. And I want to use my visual capacity in some way. So I'm actually going to redraw the diagram again. And I'm going to redraw it in a way that will make the, uh, I think I've also learned from experience that it was a bit small last time. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Now then, I want to have a, first of all, I want to have this triangle being isosceles. I want this length to be, uh, so this, my 20 degree angle is too small still. I think I, I care about that, so I'm going to start again. I want to make a, a, a pointier triangle to start with. Uh, 
Now then, let's make this isosceles. I think about there should do it. That looks roughly the same length as that. So down we go. And then I want to make, what was the one? Oh yes, from here to here to here. So let's go from about there. That now looks reasonably isosceles. And now put in the angles that we absolutely know. Those were I must remind myself, yep. Sixty, fifty, twenty. 30 and 20. I want to argue that this triangle is isosceles. In which case I will need this to be, oh actually I already know that this bit here is certainly 100. Um, and then I had also equilateral triangle here. So that's 60. Um, so notice that the, these things that I've added in are looking really quite nice. So I've got that length is equal to that length. And it's conjecturally equal to that length. So I would like to be able to show that I can sort of put a nice big circle about here that sort of goes through that point, that point, and that point. Um, but why should I be able to do that? I'd certainly get one that goes through those two points, but that's because I've built it to be equilateral. Should I think about where else it goes? Up here? Sort of slightly tempting, I suppose. Um, also gives another very clear reason that this length has to be smaller than this length. Um, so that's 20. I'm going to put that in out of curiosity and draw that line there. So if that's 20, I've now by, I've determined that I've decided to put this point so that that length equals that length. So I don't know what these lengths are. But this angle here will have to be um, 80. Uh, that's not very clear, so let me just. That's 80. So that is 100. And that's, wow, another 60. Um, and if only we knew what either of those angles were, then we'd be in good shape, but we don't. We've got another 20, 60, 100 thing anywhere. Um, what was, let me just go back and remind myself what this angle 50 that was 80 to 100. Oh, that's right, that was another 50. 
then that was one one zero seventy one one zero and seventy. Still feels reasonably promising, but it's just I've still got I'm still in the situation where I've got a whole bunch of angles, any one of which, and if I knew that angle, then I'd be able to angle chase because uh, I get that angle, which would give me that angle, which would give me that angle, which would give me that angle. Well, this angle is already the one I want. Um, if I knew that angle. Then I'd get that angle, which would give me that angle, which would give me that angle, and so on and so forth. So basically, any angle that I can fit in other than the ones um, just quickly remind myself this is 30, 110, that was a 40. And this one we know is 20. So I don't mean, yeah, so I just, now that I, I think now I have put in all the angles that we actually know, but I'm still in this awkward situation where um, we have those, so to speak, red angles, and any one red angle will imply all the other ones. Uh, what did, just out of in curiosity, what do we want this angle to be? So we want that to be 30, 30 plus 40 plus 60, so we want that one to be 50. And therefore, we want that one to be 50. Uh, that's actually just another way of saying we wanted this triangle to be similar to this triangle. <laughs> but that actually means that we want this triangle to be isosceles. So we've got an isosceles triangle here. Somehow we would like this triangle to be isosceles of that length equaling that length. Let me just quickly mark that in because that's easy to mark. If I want that length, well, if that were the case, I'd be done. So perhaps I should stick with my convention. And get rid of this little thing here without accidentally getting rid of the whole line, which I'd rather not do. So I leave it there, but I'll just try and go over it. So conjecturally, that length equals that length. And if I could prove that that length were equal to that length, <clears throat> then I'd be in fabulous shape. Uh, 20, 60, 100, any conceivable reason that can I get another 2060 thing with this uh, doesn't look like it doesn't seem to be involved in anything very much apart from that triangle very suggestive about the fact that we have this conjectural um, right angled triangle with a 30-60. So it's a particularly nice right angled triangle. So I'm going to start, I, I want to think about things backwards now in a funny kind of way, uh, which is I take a right angled triangle that's 30, 60, 90. I'll just see if I can sort of do a sort of 
and I don't know how to the middle of this side here. So that means that that's also 60. If I started with that and I wanted to build this triangle, is there some nice way of thinking about what this triangle actually is? Uh, I'm not altogether sure. Um, So it looks as though in order to get in order to get this triangle, I, I want to build here um, an isosceles triangle with fifty and fifty. So I do something like this: fifty. fifty. So that length is equal to that length. And 50. So then the question is, if I do all that, what do I get if I now join that point to that point? And that point to that point and sort of form up a triangle. Can I will I get a 20 at the top? So in other words, if I sort of extend that like this and I extend that like this. I'm trying to sort of okay, I haven't really explained what I'm doing here. Um I'm going down a sort of little flight of fancy, which is conjecturally this triangle, when you put these extended lines in, gives us this rather nice. Um, half of an equilateral triangle, the other half being up here, so to speak. So I'm trying to say, it sort of feels as though if this determines this, then if we do things the other way around, this plus a little bit of extra data, namely that this angle is 50, um, should determine this in, in if, we, if we try and do things in the reverse direction. So I'm trying to create a kind of puzzle that ought to be equivalent, which is, given these angles, can we deduce, so let's now just put this one in red to say that I haven't actually established that this is 20. Um, and my question is, is this problem, this modified problem, any easier than the problem that we started with? It's got the same difficulty, you know, if I could only uh, put in this angle here as 20, then I think I would be... Hmm, would I be in good shape? Um, no, but that's, sorry, that's nonsense. That I know is 20 because I've got 50 and 50, so that one must be 20 because if you mark that in, that's not conjectural. But if I could prove that this triangle were isosceles, then I'd be in good shape. Now, actually, now that makes me think of another question. Is the isosceles of this triangle... By the way, what is that triangle over here? Oh, yes, so we've got that 20 and that 20. So we do know that that length equals that length. Um, but down here, we don't know that that length is that length, because now I've assumed that I started with this, and I don't know that this angle is 20. Um, but does that isosceles depend on this angle being 50? So if I were to increase this um, if I increase this 20 to 21 or something, or 22, Let's do it like that. If I put this up to 22, then this would have to go down to 49. This would have to go down to 49. Um, so I'd have 82 plus 49, which is um, 80 plus 50 plus 1, 
So this 20 would go down to 19. So we don't have, okay, so the, 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 the reason I did that was what we've established is there's not some sort of nice reason that's going to depend only on the particular lines that we've got here and um, extending them and so on. Um, it actually depends critically on the fact that this angle is 50. If I were to make this angle a bit, a, a tiny bit bigger and these two 50s to a tiny bit smaller, um, then this angle here, instead of getting bigger in line with this one, would get smaller. And then this triangle would not be isosceles anymore. So if I want to try to use or sort of prove that it's isosceles, I've somehow got to use the fact that this angle is 50. And since 50 is a sort of weird angle, it's not a multiple of 30, and it's not a multiple of, it's not 45, and it's just not a very nice angle. It seems rather difficult. And of course, these 20s are also equally not very nice angles. It seems rather difficult to think how one could use very weird actually very very weird that one can actually get anything that's not by angle chasing so by, by pure angle chasing uh, maybe an, yet an, an, a, 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 an even further equivalent problem might actually be there will be some angle here for which this triangle is isosceles can we then prove that this resulting angle here is 50 uh, let me try and draw that as another diagram so I have my right angled triangle here with 60 and 30 I have from the center um, right, the following situation I have one and two. So that length equals that length. That's my assumption number one. And also, I assume that um, that angle equals that angle. And so this entire length here equals this entire length. And what I would like to prove is that these two angles are actually both equal to 80. So the particular, so we can imagine this one sliding around on this, this length here, on this side here. This one sliding around in such a way as to make these two lengths the same. And uh, so that once you've chosen this point, it fixes this point. Once you've chosen this point, uh, we take the line that goes through here, and we take the line that goes from here to here. We extend those until they meet. We get a triangle. Can we prove that? Um, Just a moment. How do I know that that angle is equal to that angle just because this length? Oh, yeah, so there, there comes a point as I slide this around. Uh, if I go in this direction, that angle gets smaller. And that angle 
Okay, so it gets smaller, which is pretty irritating. Um, but maybe I can argue still by the intermediate value theorem. If I move this all the way up to here, then this will move all the way out to exactly here. And then I've got um, actually automatically an isosceles triangle. If I were to move this so this was just directly above, then I think I'd probably get something that's not even clear. I would even get a triangle. I was hoping to argue that there was just a sort of uniquely determined point at which this angle was equal to this angle. But in fact, there's a, definitely a point up here where this angle equals this angle. It's not can't always be equal to this angle, surely. that length equals that length. Yeah, we could if, if, I, if I make this point directly below this point, uh, then here I'll find some then I've got this angle being 90 degrees, but that won't be uh, if I want to make that equal, if I put this point, yeah. If I have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here, then this length will be, I think, smaller than that length. Also, it's not completely obvious either. Let me just quickly write, draw another diagram, get rid of in a minute. If I have 90 degrees, what I would like to argue, or I want to discuss it anyway which how does this how does this length compare with this length let me see quickly let me sort of put a similar triangle here and here um they congruent it seems very nice if they were but okay Circle of radius one, that's one. I shouldn't be having to do this. That's one. I always feel a bit of a failure if I have to use Pythagoras to say that this is something to do with the square root of three, but it's not even a very nice. That's one. That's 30 degrees. Um, if I was to do it with, I know that if that's one, that's two. And so that is square root of three. So now I, uh, not Pythagoras. So if that's one, that's one over the square root of three. And I've got this thing here. So that was two, that's one. So this height here is the square root of three. No, it wasn't, wasn't it? Two, one. So that length rather is the square root. Um, 
I know so sort of I know I can work out this rate, but it's just a pain to do. But I I've got I've got some sort of a scale here, I suppose. Uh, oh, yes, two to root three is the same as root three to, I want to know what this thing here is. Ah, oh, I am actually, this is, this is properly embarrassing because if I draw that line there, then I've got a, 60 and a 60 so this is a nice equilateral triangle so if that's one this length here is a half so that's a half and that was one over root three so they're definitely not the same um <clears throat> so that gives me hope that there is basically one place by the intermediate values or maybe a couple of places a sort of degenerate case where we had an equilateral triangle and uh, another place where this angle is 20. But um, so when I say a place, I mean a choice for this length that results in this triangle being isosceles. But why that angle should be, why 20 should be the special, special angle that makes that work is still, unfortunately, a bit of a mystery to me. If that's 80, then that's 100. So that's also, we're hoping to be 20. Um, is that of any interest? I, I just feel as I'm just drawing stuff in now just for, for fun but um, so if that would be another we would like it if that was 20 and that was 60 uh, that's, I don't think that's getting a bit too speculative in my drawing. Okay, so I think I am getting, <coughs> as predicted, getting to the point where um, I've tried quite a lot of things. One thing I haven't tried, as I said earlier, is um, just trying to sort of brute force it by um, doing lots of trigonometry working out exactly what this uh, ratio is in terms of you know sines and cogs and and so on and then seeing if I can do some horribly messy trig identity to get the whole thing out or something like that you know, I'm not saying that's necessarily the, the right method to or a method that could be made to work in a reasonable length of time but Particularly, again, I'm still worried about all these uh, um, strange angles like 50 and 20 and 70 and things like that. Um, but it might be that one could use the fact that they, um, maybe one could sort of decompose those angles. 50 is 80 minus 30. That's not, that's not, very, that's not very nice. Can we make, can one even make 50 out of nicer angles by adding them together in funny ways even that's not very easy um, but it was a sort of thought that maybe one could use addition formulae and um, so I'm, if, if the only nice angles are multiples of 30 or 45 then they're all multiples of 15. Mm. And since 50 is not a multiple of 15, it seems very difficult to incorporate 50. Are there any other angles about which I know anything special? And I'm not sure I can think of any. So that's actually a sort of fundamentally puzzling aspect of the problem that um, 
if we replace 50 by, as I've established already, if we play, replace 50 by just some x, let's say, then certain nice things that happen with this diagram cease to happen. Uh, in fact, that's an actually quite an interesting question, which I'll, I'll close with for the moment. Supposing I did replace 50 by x. Um, or, yeah, by some suitable, I had an x over here, that's why I'm hesitating, but I, I, I by some other number, so I have to replace this 20 by some other number as well. Um, but then that 20 would no longer be equal to that 20 up there. Nevertheless, I would have, if I extended this line at a particular angle and... Uh, what I want to be saying about this. I think I have, I get to choose this angle and that angle. So if I choose this angle and I choose that angle, um, in fact, maybe I can just go, go further. I, I, I think I get to choose, the, I'm allowed to choose this angle, this angle, this. I just draw any triangle. Let me, no, let me just... Uh, make this question a bit clearer. If I draw any triangle, who cares? And I draw some line like that, and some line like that, some line like that, and I tell you what this angle is, you know, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And I say, can you determine this angle theta? Then the fact that this is gamma, you know, we, we know what this angle is. I'll just call it uh, epsilon or something. Um, then just the same argument I gave earlier on, that knowing that this angle is gamma and knowing what the shape of the big triangle is, we, can, we know what the ratio of this length to this length is. We know what the ratio of this length to this length is. So theta is determined by all this data. Um, and yet, it seems that in a general case, we know that an angle chase is not going to, to work because it didn't work in the special case. But we also have the various um, conjectured isosceles triangles and things will not be in a general case, conjectured isosceles triangles. So one could ask the question, are, is one in a general case just forced to do something nasty? Um, and that's where I feel that the problem is puzzling because if you're forced to do something nasty in a general case, there must be something about the angles 50, 20, 70, 40, and so on that makes it nicer in the special case. And... Uh, that's because they're strange angles. It seems to be uh, hard to imagine how that could be the case. And once an angle, once a number in maths, typically once a number gets sufficiently strange, then anything you can say about it tends to be um, generalizable to a, a much wider class of numbers. And we sort of seem to have that that's not the case here. So we've got some strange angles, 50, 40, and so on. But um, it also leads to conjectured isosceles triangles, um, which we don't necessarily get in the general case. Uh, I must stop and do other things. I might come back and make another video of myself failing to get any further with this problem. Um, but for now, I will stop.